number five, Chris Harrison, host of the ABC hit romance reality series, The Bachelor. Doug, got the first impression, Rose. Nothing to worry about tonight. Congratulations. Thank you. As for the rest of you, if you do not receive a rose, you'll be going home immediately. I wish you all the best. And if you're ready, here's Emily. When you're ready. Thank you. Now, America thought Chris might just have the secret to long-lasting love, having been married for 18 years, but the sudden collapse of his marriage stunned fans of the show. You know, but even with the scandal surrounding his sudden breakup, he's still thriving as a host. Let me bring in Maggie Furlong from the Huffington Post, who is here in Hollywood with me, and from New York, Stuart Basil, who is founder of thedirtyand30.com. Now, Stuart will be hosting the 2012 U.S. National Texting Championship in Times Square tomorrow. Okay, ladies, so I think I almost uh, have to be a hopeless romantic, you think, to jump on the Bachelor Series bandwagon. But, you know, even with Chris's breakup, the fans have stood behind him. So, Maggie, I guess the first question would be, what is the lesson to be learned about surviving a scandal here? How did Chris Harrison make this whole thing work and come out unscathed, really? He didn't really talk about it, and I think that's the biggest thing. You know, scandal's gonna happen no matter what. Chloe is no stranger to her own <laughs> scandals. So I feel like not feeding into the media beast is rule number one in being a good host, not making it about yourself. You know, watching Chris on TV, he's just a likable guy, mm -hmm. you know? So, Stuart, I want to ask you, is it possible that his breakup may have made him, I, mean, I guess, maybe even more popular than viewers? I mean, he's showing that he's just as vulnerable as everybody else out there. You know, I agree. I think everyone wants to see that we are all human beings. We all make mistakes, and life isn't picture perfect. You might find the man or woman of your dreams, and it doesn't always work out. But I think as women, we like to see a cool, calm, collected guy, and he's a man's man and totally dateable and on the market now. And from finding love to finding fame, so you think you can dance host Kat Dealey is number four on our reality host Uncovered Countdown. And as the top 20 are revealed, they'll be dancing live right here on our stage in Hollywood. Welcome to Say so You Think You Can Dance. Now, I've just got to say, I love her. <laughs> and Kat just shines when she takes the stage from the contestants to the judges. You know, she just really pulls that show together. So, Maggie, What's the lesson here about Kat's? I, I guess it's just kind of her candid TV personality. It is. I feel like Kat Dealey has one of the hardest jobs in the business mm -hmm. because she has to make you care about these dancers. And her job got even harder this year because they moved from two nights to just one night a week. She's got half the time now to make the judges and the audience know who these people are and really let them shine. Yeah, I think she is super, super likable. Now, in the number three spot... America's Got Talent host Nick Cannon, who replaced Jerry Springer in the show's fourth season in 2009. You know, those were really big shoes to fill, considering Regis Philbin is the one who helped launch the show as host. But Nick has found a way, I think, to really connect with the viewers and the show's, you know, ever-changing roundtable of judges. So that brings us now to number two on the Showbiz Countdown of Reality Hosts Uncovered, and he is... Tom Bergeron, host of ABC's hit show Dancing with the Stars. Now get this, Tom has been at the helm hosting more than 20 different radio and TV shows and it, what that proves is basically he's got staying power. Now Stuart, you have seen him in action on Dancing with the Stars and America's Funniest Home Video, so what do you think makes Tom Bergeron so special? What makes Tom so special is Tom is always Tom. He's such confidence. He owns who he is. It doesn't matter what show he's on. He's going to give his opinion, his two cents. And he slips in some of the funniest little one-liners on Dancing with the Stars. He cracks me up all the time. Yeah, he's like your next door neighbor, the one that you actually like and that you want to hang out with at the neighborhood the barbecue. The crazy uncle. Exactly. Yeah, totally. Definitely. Yeah, you know, Maggie, Tom's staying power is unmatched. And, you know, we don't just see those TV hosts that are able to move from show to show and do it so well. What do you think it is that makes people want to invite him into their homes night after night, year after year? He does. He seems like someone you know. Like you yeah. said, the, the neighbor, the uncle. He's such a likable, normal, down-to-earth guy. And he has no problem kind of being self-deprecating when he makes jokes about the dancers and himself. And he always just seems to be enjoying himself mm -hmm. and to be in the moment. And I feel like that makes a very good host someone that can actually enjoy the show happening around them. Yeah, and you know what, Stuart? You know what it, it seems about Tom Bergeron as well? It seems like he just kind of likes his job. He likes what he does. 
He's always having the best time. He's floating around, talking to the audience members. He's cutting it up with Max. It doesn't matter what he's going to say. It's going to be entertaining, and he has a great smile on his face. And is, he has the best job ever, and it shows. Well, that brings us to the number one on the Showbiz Countdown reality host uncovered. Ryan Seacrest is now ruling over a massive media kingdom. He's got a syndicated radio show, he's hosting a top-rated TV show, and he's producing the mega hit Keeping Up With The Kardashians. Showbiz Tonight's Green Winter takes a closer look at the Seacrest empire. According to the New York Times, Seacrest earns more than $50 million a year between his radio and TV deals. But how did he do it? Radio was his first love, but it was TV that changed his life forever. This is American Idol. In 2002, Seacrest landed the hosting gig on American Idol, and that set him up for one deal after the other. Uh, hi, it's Ryan Seacrest. First with Clear Channel for his radio program, On Air with Ryan Seacrest. We are just a couple minutes away from the new year. Then on TV, when in 2005 he joined the late Dick Clark for New Year's Rockin' Eve, and just a year later joining E! to host and produce several shows, and now NBC. Ryan should be everywhere. Everywhere. That is Ryan's goal. Larry King, broadcast icon and close friend to Seacrest, tells Showbiz Tonight, Ryan is dialed into the business side of show business, just like his mentor, Dick Clark. I asked him the other night we had dinner, would you rather produce a successful show or host a successful show? What did he say? 50-50. Uh, he loves the business end of the business. He likes the figures, he likes meetings, he likes meetings. Who likes meetings? Ryan likes taking meetings. Whether it's meetings for his next hosting gig or his next blockbuster producing deal, Showbiz Tonight can tell you Ryan's on top of the entertainment world. Forget the Kardashians. Try keeping up with him, a man who shows no signs of slowing down. Our thanks to Corrine Winter. Now, was there any doubt that Ryan Seacrest tops our list on the Showbiz Countdown reality host uncovered? Probably not. So let me bring back Maggie Furlong from the Huffington Post and Stuart Basil, founder of the TheDirtyAnd30.com. Now, Maggie, the first question to you. Ryan just seems to have that it factor or the X factor or whatever you want to call it. Is this smart business on his part? I think it's absolutely a smart business. You know, Ryan Seacrest has branded himself in all these different arenas. He's got the radio, he's got the TV. Mm -hmm. He can do it all, but I definitely feel like he's also a really good host. They wouldn't have kept him on Idol for this long if he didn't love doing it and if audiences didn't love having him. So I feel like that's the job for him. Yeah, you know what? He makes it look easy, and it's not easy. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why so many people think they can do it, because he makes it look so easy. And I'm sure that we're going to see a lot more of Ryan. So, Stuart, what do you think? Is there any chance of Ryan Seacrest becoming overexposed. You know, with this latest stint over the Olympics, I felt like a lot of people were talking about it. Why is Ryan Seacrest at the Olympics? But come on, as a host myself, he's someone that I look up to so much, and Khloe Kardashian should take some serious tips about how to run a live competition show like he does. He is amazing. He's an empire. It doesn't matter if he never does a TV job again. With everything he does behind the scenes, he's got it going on, and his fashion isn't so bad. He's no Cat Dealey, but he dresses amazing. <laughs> oh, yes, he does. Yeah, he definitely he does. does. And, and, I, and, you know, I think she makes a good point there. He makes about $15 million on American Idol, Maggie, but he makes so much more mm -hmm. being an executive producer of all of his other Absolutely. shows. So she's right. He didn't have to host another day, and no. he is just fine. But he likes it. You he, can tell. Well, he yeah. does like it because now he's doing this stint with NBC News, and now that he's associated with them, here's the question, though. Do you think people will take him seriously on a news program if they're not seeing him saying, we'll be back? after the break. <laughs> it is sort of one of those things, and, and she mentioned a lot of sort of mixed reviews of his Olympics mm -hmm. coverage. I'm really curious to see how he makes the transition and really how he goes into being this non-hosty kind of host. He has to sort of be Ryan Seacrest and not be on all the time. He needs to show a little bit more of himself if he's going to do this NBC gig right. Yeah, because we see Ryan Seacrest the host, but it's not often that we see Ryan Seacrest the person. Exactly. And so that's the transition you have to make there. But I'm with you, Stuart. I think yeah. that he need that Chloe Kardashian needs to go to Ryan Seacrest hosting boot camp and she would be <laughs> just fine. Maggie Furlong, Stuart Basil, thank you very, very much.